Hi, welcome to my channel. This is part three of a workshop on painting an Irish Shepherd. Make sure you've watched parts one and two to see how we got here. And just one quick note, you can get all the files and brushes and everything needed for this painting from the links that are below. Also, you'll see my Patreon link there as well. So if you like lessons like these and you want hours more of content and lessons for only $3 a month, then come over and support my work there. Again, it's only $3 a month, so for hours of lessons, so it's a really good deal. Um, anyway, let's get started with the next part of this painting. Okay, so let me layer this real quick. And let's look at doing some of this foreground. So like I mentioned, we're going to ignore um, this for our final. That's kind of the roadmap for where we're headed. We're headed towards this guy, these sheep. We've got some of the background painted in, the beginnings of it, and we'll like go back and add textures and stuff like that to kind of round it out. But now let's start on some of this. And I think we'll go down here and start in this area to try and give some um, texture to it and try to give some context to it as well. So I'm going to again select this layer by holding control and then left clicking on it. And I'll go ahead and hide these guys again. So I want to add some stuff here. And one of the easiest ways to do that for is just to add texture down to it. So I'm going to go back up here to our my watercolor brushes um, and grab maybe color watercolor brush four. I'm going to select this color here. And I'm going to come a little bit further down towards the reddish orange and a little bit across towards the gray. And let's see how that looks. It's a little dark. Okay, so that'll work. And the reason I'm doing this is that it notice that it kind of mutes it to blend in a little bit more with this. Okay, because we could bring the fog up over top of it as well and have it and then get rid of it here. But, um, you know, we'll kind of figure that out as we go. All right, so let's do a little bit of work here on the foreground. I'm going to go back up to my, let's go to gouache dry brush. And brush in. This one has kind of a, uh, well here let me show you a little bit zoomed in on it. So this leaves that kind of a texture. Okay. So I want to break this up down here and kind of dry brush in what could look like stones and stuff like that down here. Okay. So that's what I'm trying to get in. I'm, I'm putting it down and then kind of smudging it out a little bit because I don't want it to show a whole lot of texture. Just kind of a, kind of a hint of it because again, I paint impressionistic. So and this is a hundred percent right here and go different directions and if you're using these brushes moving the brush around different ways and directions gives you a little bit slightly different uh, look and feel for it okay and so we've got some of that I'm going to soften it a little bit because there's a little bit too much pattern repeating like so and you can also go with this bush brush And really, we're just kind of dry brushing in some different looks and feels, feels, some different look and feel for what's going on down here. Now, then, if you go to textures, and these are the ones that are included with Art Rage, you have several different ones here. Uh, these particles and snow particles. Snow particles, you may have seen me use in other ones. So we're going to go to a little bit darker. We're going to throw some of those in. And that's very soft and very subtle. If you look, you can see it a little bit. 
but it'll give kind of the impression of stuff off in the distance. Now all I did here was I lowered the opacity so it wasn't so dark. And if I were doing this traditionally, I would be using a toothbrush and just loading it with some thin paint and splattering it on there. Okay. So that's what I would be doing. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger than some of these here in the front. And that kind of gives us the feeling of something off in the distance. Okay. So that'll kind of keep coming down through there. And I think that'll work for that. So let's control D. Now this is kind of a rough edge anyway, so it's not too bad to go ahead and leave that, but I do want to add just a little bit of extra texture to it. So I'm going to come back to my cloud brush. I'm going to lower the size down quite a bit. I'm going to select some of this darker color. And I want to just kind of put in a little bit more towards the edge here. Break that up a little bit. And kind of soften it. And really just I've moved some stuff around, just, just different things of interest, so it's not just all the same. And we can even go back to textures. And let's grab this lichen brush. Bring it way down. Again, just kind of throwing in some different textures and could be bushes off in the distance, could be a bunch of different things, but it's really just there to to kind of give the idea and the impression of different stuff. I'm also going to use this a little bit here and there for some of this starting for the bushes. Okay, so we kind of have that. Now in my drawing and in the original picture that again was provided by Jackie Dishner, there's some fence posts. So let's do that next. I'm actually going to make these on top of this layer because I'm starting to get some overflow and some things I want to be able to go in and correct and erase from. So we'll do that. And then I'm going to come back over here to my tools, grab that. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to make another one. I don't really care about this down here, it's going to be covered by the sheep, so... Maybe one more. These are old, fallen over fence posts. Yeah, maybe that's why he's moving the sheep, because the fence has gotten all crazy. Who knows? Alright, so if you've seen me do this before, there's a couple different ways to do it, but I'm going to go with the one I did in the other video, which is to grab brownish dark color and kind of smear that in real quick. Figure our light source is really kind of diffused, so we'll just kind of throw in a little bit of color here and there, and move this around a bit darker, and just shaking this back and forth as you smear it up. It kind of smears that paint around and gives you some interesting looking beginnings for um, this wood. Okay, now then we're going to go back to our pencil tool and just kind of come along and make a few lines here and there to kind of rough this up a little bit. Go along the edges. I'm going to go to my hard tip one. I'm also going to zoom in. See this a little better. This is one of the things I do love about digital versus traditional. Because traditional, if I wanted to really zoom in, I have to go break out the magnifying glass. And what I'm trying to do here is get rid of any of these straight edges and stuff. So these would just be old, naughty, naughty, naughty posts is what it would be. Naughty. Naughty posts. Um, 
Yeah, just old knotted up posts. It's an evil naughty suit. Deserves a spanking. Anyway, the coffee's kicking in. Alright. And just by kind of streaking. There's really just nothing to these, just be loose. Throw in a few random strokes here and there to kind of break up the silhouette of it. The farm I was growing up on, we'd use these old cedar posts and they were just the naughtiest of things, man. They would get all splintered and cracked and stuff, but they would last forever. Just the exterior of it would look rough. And then eventually they would go bad, but you'd have to replace them, but for the most part, not so much. In the hole right there. Just to add some character. Alright, so now I'm going to go to my palette knife, bring that way down, like so, and just kind of go over the bottom here a little bit. Kind of soften it, and that'll kind of set it down into. We'll come back and add stuff over top of it, but that'll kind of set it down into the grass and the bushes down the distance. Okay, um, so that'll do that. Now we could do. I think in the original there was a perhaps a bit of a stone wall. So let's do just a hint of a stone wall. Alright, and we'll do this on top of this in case we don't like it. That way we can always go back and undo it. So again, grabbing darker color. Just kind of throw that in there real quick. A little bit lighter color. A little bit more. Like so. A little bit lighter. Now the easiest thing to do with this is actually grab one of the other brushes. And of course I'm going back to my favorite, the Impressionistic Cloud Brush. I'm so happy I made that brush. It just works so well. And if it's a little too soft for you, you can change it around to something else. Okay. You could even take go down to something like this watercolor and add that in you could do overlay or you could come to some of the custom ones do like a dry brush Pasta brush. If it's just not kind of sticking, quote unquote, just go to the and make a new layer and then add it. And the key with these is to just really kind of put them on and leave a space for where the grout and stuff would be stacked on and if you use some of these other brushes they're really kind of random in what they're going to lay down so it can make your life a little bit easier like so and you can grab a little bit of different color throw some of that in so maybe some of the shadows That's a little bit different. Like so. Then you can come back down to something like your watercolor brushes with overlay. You can go to a little bit lighter color and throw in some overlay over top some of those. Okay, now then, and control D. So we've got to get rid of this sharp edge, so let's go to our eraser tool and 
can bring the opacity way down. Maybe not the opacity, but the size. I add that a little bit more. Just kind of soften some of this edge and follow like where the rocks would be. I mean, this could just be an old stacked up wall. And honestly, this is going to be really small, so you don't have to spend a whole lot of time on it. Let's merge this down. Just slightly darker. And soften some of this down here on the bottom. This kneaded eraser tends to work kind of towards the middle of the brush of the eraser. So that's why I've brought this size down so I can control a little bit more where it's erasing. Alright, so let's zoom this back out. So there's a hundred percent, so it's going to be really down there, and it's going to be really covered by some of these sheep. Okay, but it's going to be one of those things that just adds a little character and a little something down there. If you want, you can go into this and also something like the smooth uh, transparent ink and really kind of adds a little bit of um, shadows stuff to some of these stones, just a little bit more uh, clarification on the shape of it. You can also go to something like um, this round, which I find this funny. It's round and smooth, but it keeps defaulting to the square head for some reason. And I've yet to figure out why, because it didn't used to. Anyway. Okay. I like to make sure my shadows are in this blue range. And just really kind of tighten up some of these crooks and crevices. Smoothing is a little too high, so let me turn that down. And we're going to cover up the majority of this, so don't spend too much time on it, but just kind of get it to a point where you're okay with it, so that way if it does show, you're like, oh, I wish I had done this or that. Instead, you're just like, yeah, it's finished. Okay, so let's zoom that back out. So we've got some nice fences here, a little bit of distant fields or shore or whatever. Um, and then we've got the ocean there. So let's do these bushes now. I'm going to come a little bit on top of this foreground one. And I'm going to add in these bushes. So you've got some different ways you can do this with these bushes. In my Gumroad stuff, and I know I keep referencing that again and again, and it's not so that you'll buy it. I mean, I would love if you did, but it's just because I made these to make my life easier to paint. And so now I use these for painting. And so it's just easier to me. Okay. So that's why I keep referencing. There are others you can use, like the ones in the texture, like I was doing with the lichen a minute ago, uh, these particle ones, and, some, and I'll probably switch back and forth to some of those, but um, for now I just want to use some of these. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get, this is a little bit more underpainting, okay? So I'm trying to think about the crooks and crevices of the bushes that he's walking past. Those to look. All right, because I'm thinking it's going to be kind of along through here will be some bushes. And then this will be an embankment here, and so we may put some grasses and maybe a couple stones or something there as well. So as this gets a little closer, I'm going to change the size of it so I get a little bit bigger leaves. 
This is just my custom leaf bush brush. You can also do the Now, if I was doing this with a regular brush, I would just be tapping this in, is what I would be doing here. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to get some of this texture. I don't need this guy here anymore. So again, just the underpaintings are built up of texture and getting the hint of stuff so that you see different things in it. You'll see like these streaks will start to be seen as twigs. They'll start to be seen as uh, stems and stuff like that. So that's why we're kind of putting these in and really varying what's going on with it. Okay, because we're going to eventually put the flowers and stuff like that. All right, so this part here. So that gives us a little bit of the uh, beginnings for that um, the shrubs and everything. Okay. All right. Now we want to start adding in some of the different variations of grass. So we're going to drop this back a little bit to a different green. Get something a little bit different as far as value and hue and we'll add in some more spots and speckles and bushes and Like so. Okay. I'm just tapping these in. So that it really gives kind of that rough underpainting for what we're wanting. Now, then, one of the things I want to do is I want to come back in here and we'll go with this bush brush and turn it on eraser mode. And I want to erase out some spots where some of that blue will show through. Okay, now we're getting a little bit of the underpainting here, which is fine. We'll that in a second. But I want these spots to be here because this isn't, a, bushes aren't, you know, they're not a brick walls, so they're not solid. So we want to be able to see through it a little bit. Okay. Now then let me go grab this blue and this brush, it doesn't really matter. I'll get some lag on that brush, so I'll switch to a different one. So now you can see how that kind of lets it peek through like we're looking through it. And again, all these are building these layers that helps your eye to read. What is this doing? Why is that there? How does this look that way? Why does it look that way? And so that's what we're going to focus on. All right. Now, one of the things we need to do is we need to build up 
the flowers for this. We're going to do heather flowers, and we're going to do some yellow. I think I've seen flowers that look like yellow heather, but honestly, I don't know if there's yellow heather or not. And I've not cared enough to look. I just, I can make flowers. It's my world, like Bob Ross says. It's my world. You can make whatever flowers you want. And that's what I'm going to do. All right. I want kind of a smudgy... Bounce around trying to figure out what brush I want. Let me see how, if I, how I like this one. We're going to go a little bit closer to yellow and this kind of a dirty yellow right up here top of this layer actually we're going to zoom in and think about composition and how this goes okay that's too soft so let's make that opacity all the way up Uh, not really the brush I'm wanting. Actually, I think that one will work pretty good because it's kind of pulled together. Okay, now what I'm doing here is I'm trying to... I'm drawing like this, okay, but in small areas so that I get kind of that vertical, and I mean that tied together line of stuff like that, okay? So I'm doing that, but I'm doing it in really small areas, and I'm trying to make this interesting for the negative space that's around these flowers. The negative space is this right here, these areas of different color, okay? So I'm trying to lay these in in a way that seems interesting. And that kind of sets the stage for adding in highlights and stuff later. And I'm also thinking about, you know, how is this spilling over in the area? How is it arranged? How is it going to look? So that's kind of the constant thing. Now be wary, look, there, 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 and there. Those are patterns, okay? The human brain constantly tries to make or find patterns. So if you see any of that, break it up. Okay, that's something to be aware of. I mean, plants do have a pattern. They do have a way they grow. But honestly, it doesn't mean you have to paint it that way. And some of this will come back and break up when we start putting some of the highlights. Because again, this is just the tedious part of putting in the underpainting. But hopefully you can kind of see how this really sets the stage for what we've got coming up next and the highlights and everything else. So let's zoom out a little bit. Okay. skip this space because I want to do something different with that. So now I'm just going to, alright, so leaving this where it is, I'm not changing that, I'm going to click on purple. So now I have, uh, I don't know why my computer keeps doing that. I click on stuff down here in the bottom and it just randomly activates something else. Um, so I'm going to put some of these purple ones in here because these guys are really going to play off of each other because they're complementary colors. And I think they would be really pretty to have them kind of next to each other. And I'm going to dull this down a little bit because that purple is coming across just a little too bright. Alright, 
so one of the things you'll notice right here digital paint has a tendency to burn itself out what I call burnout which is basically where it oversaturates itself I took advantage of that by starting out here and brushing into it so it changed it kind of green and kind of sits itself in there really well so you can play around with those things and get a feeling for them and that's kind of what I did there okay all right so now I'm gonna grab some of this green I'm gonna throw some of that in there as well like maybe it's a um, bush or something but I want to break up some of this add a little more interest all right so now we've got that coming down through there we've got some interesting stuff through here I'll put these coming over so it kind of pushes that back a little bit visually like so and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that yellow go on top of it come up just slightly and I'm going to add some highlights So we're at 24% for the thing. I'm going to drop it just a little, ever so slightly. It gives me just a little different stroke when I put it down. And again, I don't want to go over all these gold, these, the kind of dark mustardy color. I need to keep that because that's what builds my colors, my depth. Like so I'm going to go a little bit over, a little bit. Sorry if you can hear that noise, my printer just kicked on for some reason. I want to throw a little bit of this golden color in here. go with a more bright yellow just to add a little bit of difference there we go to switch brushes and try to break up some of this color here and there Oops. Okay, now I'm going to switch back a little bit to this acrylic. I want to kind of pull some of these clumps together a little bit. It's a little too much texture there, in my opinion. So I want to kind of eliminate some of that. And just roll random. So let's zoom in on that a little bit. 100%. And just the wash dry brush ever so slowly. What I'm doing here is I'm looking at some of these other colors down through here. 
I'm thinking, okay, let's highlight some of those. Ever so much. This is one of those things, it's just kind of a tedious thing to do, but you gotta kind of do it, otherwise it's just not gonna pull together. And that's the same for if you're doing traditional or digital. And obviously doing this is a lot of times what makes me end up making a stencil or a brush is because I think, how can I do this where it doesn't take me as long to do it? Now let's do the same with the purple. Okay, I'm going to actually switch brushes. Some of this yellow is still too really intense for me, so I want to come down here with a salt brush. There we go. Trying to just break these up a little bit these intense areas and this one really is just click the mouse to drop it in there. Kind of let it do its thing. that up a little more. Now what I want to do is start adding in some grasses. So I'm going to go to my ink tool and I'm actually going to go ahead I think and bring all these grass layers foreground down together. So I can start here and if you look merge down is control alt and down arrow. So I'm going to do control alt down arrow, down arrow, down arrow, down arrow. I can go ahead and merge all those. Okay. So now I've got those down there. So now I'm going to go to my round and smooth. And I even can start with the transparent. But let's go to the round and smooth. Take off the square head. Let's go to uh, select that color, that kind of mustardy green. Come a little bit further down towards brown. And now what I want to do is start putting in some of these, but I don't want to do it on this layer like I started to. 
So now we can take, and I'm actually going to do the smooth transparent ink because I kind of like how that does. It's a bit softer. If you put tab, it kind of clears some of the stuff off out of your way. do that. Now I want to go to the eraser and zoom in. And on these ends, just ever so slightly erase. And by doing so, it makes it really feel like it's coming out of grass and bushes that are back there. And you can do this a couple of times and that's what I usually do. Just kind of erase a little bit here and there. Just really soft. Kneaded eraser or the soft eraser work great for this. Let me show you that as a matter of fact. Kneaded eraser. Honestly, sometimes I think the kneaded eraser works a little better. As you can see, either one can get the same effect. And by doing it this way, you don't have to worry about how these start, because some of mine have a tendency to start with a real crooked bottom because of the way I guess I'm rotating my wrist and stuff when I do the brush stroke. But see how these have that right here? Well, I don't want that. So I fade off into nothing like so. And then that also brings some of the flowers forward. It kind of sets the... it's almost like it's a shadow. The way it kind of fades in. So, But if there's a flower or something that's in front that I like better, or there's ones like this one that I don't like at all, I can just erase them out. ones like this guy right here, which is way too long to be down there. Maybe I just get rid of him. Just like that. But that transparent ink really kind of sets these in here and makes it softer and more subtle. So that's why I like to use it and then go back with a little bit crisper brush like the smooth round. See how we're building the texture and it's getting all of that in there and then so when you consider where these guys are going to be with the person and the dog and all that you can really see how they're going to kind of settle into it so it's an interesting way to do it i think 
and we'll just keep building some textures. So, all right, I'm going to save this and then we'll come back to it with the next one. So stick with me. I promise it's going to all come together and we'll really start pulling it in on the next one. Okay. So let me just save this real quick and we'll be right back for the next.